Today we are testing bootleggers. So it's time to go see a man about a horse. Hello and welcome back to another Beaver DIY day. So today we are lucky enough to have our first recipe that was sent in by someone for us to try out. So the recipe we are going to be trying is from bootleggers. So Anton was kind enough to send us the ingredients that we're going to need as well as the supplies, the yeasty babies, the flavors and the wood chips that we are going to need for this recipe. So the recipe we are making today is a bootlegger cognac. So according to Anton, this is an amazing product. So I am really excited to try it and then give you guys feedback on what it tastes like and what the process was like and also in the process to review the yeast. Talking about yeast, as you can see in the background there, we've got three 20 liter jugs or buckets or whatever you want to call them, fermenters running and uh, we are playing around with some super massive black hole yeast. So yeah, check out for that video. So let's get into the recipe from Anton. So he asked me to do the recipe with dark black sugar or dark brown sugar. Now I went around and I couldn't find any sugar or the dark brown sugar in and around the Northwest. He said it's available at Macro and unfortunately, being from the Northwest, we do not really have a macro. I then phoned a friend. He explained to me that the difference between the standard brown sugar and the dark brown sugar is that there is a certain percentage of molasses left over in the sugar. Thus, it gives it that dark brown color. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be adding molasses to the sugar to get that recipe as close to Anton's one as possible. The recipe also called for apples, exact quantities and measurements, check down in the description. I'll put the exact recipe as Anton gave it to me down in the description. But yeah, so just quickly, it's three kilograms of sugar, 500 grams of molasses and 500 odd grams of apples. First off, what we need to do is dissolve the sugar and dissolve the molasses. We've got a pot at the back there, it's boiling already. So while you guys are enjoying the beer roll, we will be cutting up the apples, we'll be adding the sugar into the water, we'll be dissolving the molasses in there. So yeah, let's get into it and see you guys back when we have everything ready for it to go into the bucket. Okay, so Anton was very specific about the temperature we need to rehydrate the yeast on. Sorry, the thermometer is the wrong way around. But he said we need to do it at 35 degrees centigrade. So let's quickly test it and see if we are as close as we can get to 35. Okay, 34 degrees. Let's just strike it around a bit. 34.2. So. That's close enough to 35, I believe. The water is at 35 or 34.2 degrees. I think that is as close as we're gonna get it to 35 for now. Um, so next up, what I need to do is I need to open this yeast. Because Anton asked that the yeast needs to be hydrated 15 minutes prior, 10 to 15 minutes prior to the pitching time. So it's going to take about 10-15 minutes for us to assemble everything. By that time the yeast should be ready to go. Also no sugar added to the starter that we're going to make here or the rehydration water. Um, Anton was very specific about that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our yeast. The yeast has a very nice banana yeast smell. So <laughs> it's quite cool. So yeah, let's get the yeast into its new home. Get every last little bit out of this 
because this is some good stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the ratio is about 2.5 grams per liter. So I'm going to be going for two tablespoons in that 20 liter wash that we're going to be making. So one. So that's about 30 grams. There, there about. So slightly more than I normally put in. Let's give that a quick shake up. And immediately the yeast starting to smell quite bready. The yeast is quite active, so immediately we just started grinding. That's good. Time to assemble. So first off, guys, just remember sanitize. The reason for sanitization is not to be seen as a ritual of scrubbing everything down and getting everything as clean as possible and all that other stuff. It's just to prevent infections and that type of stuff. Reason for it is if you're going to spend money and time and effort getting stuff to ferment and whatever, this quick little step just to spray stuff with sanitizer will save you hassles in the long run. Yes, you can do a hundred fermentations and nothing go wrong and you've never used sanitizer before, but that one time it will. Just keep in mind that make it part of your practice to just spray stuff down before you use it and it's going to save you that hassle or the chance of getting an infection. So yeah, Sanitize, bucket has been cleaned and washed properly. So all I'm going to do now is just because it's been standing around, we're just going to spray it with a quick sanitizer and just dunk it out. Okay. Step one, the instruction is that we need to keep this yeast and pitch this yeast at a high temperature above 30 degrees centigrade. So we've got boiling water at the back there and I've got hot water on standby in case I need to top up, top up with hot water. So step one, get that batch in the background. We're gonna get it into the bucket. We're gonna add about five liters of normal room temperature water, test the temperature and just keep adding and adding and adding until we get to the level we need to be at. And then what we're going to do is we are going to test the temperature and make sure it's on 30 degrees. If it's not, we'll just heat it up quickly with a drop in element or something. And then yeah, just a quick one as well. This recipe was originally supposed to be a 100 liter recipe. But unfortunately, I cannot temperature control up to 100 liters yet. That's why I scaled it down to a 20 liter because I can temperature control the 20 liter quite efficiently and ensure that I keep it at the right temperature according to the recipe. Just to make sure that there's some yeast or stuff that dies when, uh, or the yeast dies or whatever on these apples, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the apples in, like I just did, and then I'm gonna add the hot liquid on top of it, and that's gonna just bake off anything nasty or foul on the apples. The apples were washed beforehand. Give me some hot stuff. Make a big mess, remember, it's a lot more fun if you make a mess, especially when it's sticky. The temperature in the bucket now should be nice and high, so let's add some room temperature water. Also, according to the recipe, you do not have to aerate this as much as I normally do my other recipes. So. I will not be adding the, the aerator in. I will not be stirring it vigorously or anything. I will just follow the recipe as close as I can as uh, I was instructed to not make any mistakes. Okay, so we are on, on about 33 degrees. So I think it's time to pitch the yeast. The other thing the recipe calls for is nutrient. So number one, apples. The apples that we added will be nutrient and it will also add a nice little uh, flavor. And then uh, what we're going to be using is some DAP, some dimodium phosphate, kindly sponsored to the channel by Oki. Thank you very much, Oki. So the recipe calls for 50 grams of nutrient. 
So I'm going to be adding my DAP, that's 30 grams, 45 grams, and that should be 50 grams. Time to add our yeast, and the yeast has now started blooming, and it is giving off some really strong flavor. I've never smelled the yeast like this before. It is quite pungent when uh, you smell it. So I believe it's gonna pull out some nice flavors out of the sugar wash that we did here. Cause this is just a hybrid sugar wash. So yeah, I believe it's gonna give some lovely flavor. So let's pitch this yeast and then um, we are gonna close the lid up and then we are going to let it ferment out. What I want to do is just get that last little bit of yeast out of there. So, adding a couple of spoons. Boom. There we go. So yeah, that's the recipe guys. Um, if you have used the bootleggers before, Please drop a comment down below what recipes you've done with it and yeah we will try it with the rest of the yeast that we have left over here on the next episode what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running this through the still we will then also be taking the recipe into the next step on how we need to char our french french oak chips as well as how we're going to use this extracts that we have we have some vanilla and we have some caramel. So these things taste and smell ridiculously awesome. Time to get this all buttoned up and ready to start fermenting. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Have a lucky day. And uh, just remember, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and uh, wear a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you wanna get in touch with Anton to get any of his products, I will post a link down in the description with his uh, contact information as well as a link to his Facebook page. So yeah, thank you very much. Have a lucky day.